I'm Ed. I'm the E and M and E pins, and I'm here today with Mike at Mike's shop. Uh, Mike is actually the guy with the pinball machines, and I'm here helping him refit them, upgrade them, do all sorts of bad things to them that most people will probably hate. Uh, but anyway, we're here today. Uh, I want to introduce you to Mike, and then we're going to talk mostly about this eight ball machine because we're going to actually be working on it today. Go. Hey everybody, this is Mike from Mike and Ed Pins. Uh, I'm the pinball guy of this duo. Uh, I've been playing pinball ever since I was a young lad, around six years old. I grew up during the era of the Bally solid, solid State uh, pinball machines, the early era of pinball machines, and you'll be seeing many of those during this uh, venture we're uh, trying to accomplish here. Uh, so I'm also kind of like the big idea guy. Uh, Ed, hey Ed, how can we do this or that? I'm the guy who comes up with the ideas and Ed's the one who makes them happen. So uh, some of the stuff we're going to do, as Ed said before, uh, you're probably, you, you purists out there are probably not going to like it, but you know, it's not about that. These machines are, they're collectible, but they're not you know, pristine, so there's, uh, I don't feel like there's any trouble doing some of the things that we'll be doing to these machines. We'll be actually making them more reliable and better from a, just a player's point of view, so that you don't have to be, you won't have to be working on your machines all the time. But anyway, that's for you to judge. Uh, we'll just, we'll just do some cool things and uh, hopefully we'll have some fun in the process. Thank you. So Mike, of all these pinball machines, which one is your favorite? Uh, my favorite one is actually not in the room, but of these machines, I would have to say my favorite is probably, oh, I don't know, maybe this Captain Fantastic or this Star Trek machine over here. Mike, let's uh, go ahead and uh, show our audience what we're going to do today. Uh, this uh, eight ball machine is pretty much uh, a classic machine that you have already replaced the play field on, right? Yes, that's uh, right. Did you replace that back glass or is that original? That's an original back glass. Yeah, did not replace it. Beautiful. No, no reason to replace it. However, like all of these old machines, the lights are problematic because they burn out, sockets don't work, all of those issues. So what we're going to do today is the first step in replacing those lights with a strip of LEDs uh, that look like this. Now these are uh, programmable LEDs, which means I, they can be programmed to be any color, any brightness. Uh, we can make them flash or stand still or do anything we want. And they are controlled by this board. And sitting on this green background, this is going to be a little hard to see. Uh, but uh, I designed uh, and had this board manufactured. Uh, it uh, uses uh, an STM32 microprocessor. That's that little blue card in the middle there. That does all the work, and the rest of this is just interface logic to interface that processor to the LEDs and, more importantly, to the pinball machine. So this connector right here will actually plug into the MPU of the pinball machine, and then the cable that normally goes out to the light driver boards will plug into it. It intercepts the signals that the MPU was sending to the light driver boards, sends it to this processor, this processor figures out what those are, and then sends them out to this string of lights. So today we plan to check this board to see if it works in this machine, because we haven't done that yet, and uh, see if the lights all operate the way we believe they should. And if they do, then the next step will be to rip out all of the wiring for the old lights and replace them with, with this string of LEDs. Mike, you got anything to add to that? Nope, let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to have to do with this pinball table is reinstall all of the boards and make sure that the table is otherwise working. Uh, Mike, uh, over the months and years, has moved boards around from pinball machine to pinball machine. Uh, and in the process, I think every, every board has been taken out of this machine. 
Uh, so we're going to open this up and just show you the completely empty interior. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and start uh, putting the boards back in. We'll probably turn it on and check it out. And once the thing is up and running, we'll come back and show you how it looks. Okay. And that one. And I think we're there, actually. Okay, we're going to turn it on and see what it does. GI works. Here's the checker. Five, six, seven. Bingo. We're good. No smoke? No smoke. Uh, we'll never get any good internet ratings on this. <laughs> All right. All right, so uh, after some troubleshooting and uh, obviously some issues with one of the boards, we thought we had an issue. Turns out we didn't. We had a blown fuse under the play field, so we're not going to go and undo what we did to try to fix it. But as you can see now, in the back box, we're using two new boards made by Alltech Systems. This is the solenoid driver board and the MPU set to run the 8-ball game. This guy in Chesapeake, Virginia, really makes good stuff. If you're not familiar with it, check it out. All Tech Systems makes really nice replacement boards for the old Bally and Stern solid state machines. So, why don't you go ahead and turn it on, Mike? Show them that it actually really works. All right, going through the self test, seven green lights means we're in good shape. And there you go. So, okay. we'll just throw a quick credit up here and analyze the game and Everything's working. Solenoids are working fine. And quick drain. All right, we're good. Okay, let's go ahead and turn it off. So what we're going to do is this connector right here, and I'm sorry, it's a little dark. I'm standing in front of the light source right now. But this connector right here in the upper corner, J1, is uh, the connector that has the pins that feed out to the solenoid driver, or I mean the light driver board, which is down here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put our little board, we're going to unplug this cable. I might be able to do this while I'm filming. Excuse, I'll probably cut that out. Okay, I can't. I need two hands. Sorry. I'm yeah, going to turn you off for a second. Okay, we have installed our board uh, piggyback on top of the other board. Right now, we don't have any power hooked up to it. Uh, it should be able to work just fine like this. So before we hook up power and hook up our LEDs to this, we're going to just make sure that this board isn't doing anything uh, to affect the play of uh, the regular game. So, so you can see all the lights are working. So the signal is passing from the NPU through the LED board and into the rest of the circuits that are powering the lights on the machine. So just to explain what we are about to do, we have hooked up this connector, which is going to do two things. It's going to bring power onto this board. Excuse the glob of hot glue there that's holding the pins on. It's, this is a temporary uh, setup just to, for this, this testing. But it, this is going to bring 5 volts onto this board to power the board. It's also going to take the signal down this cable and into this string of LEDs. And if you follow that string of LEDs all around, it'll eventually end up at the 5 volt power supply that is power, powering the entire strip. So at the uh, end of all this installation, that power supply will be installed probably in the bottom box uh, and it'll provide power for this board. So Mike, go ahead and plug it in and we'll, we'll watch the smoke curl up and uh, See how it goes. We did turn off our light. Yeah, I guess oh, fixed. Light fixed. <coughs> so 
So when he plug, <coughs> excuse me, when he plugs this in, the power supply, the uh, computer in here will boot up. There's a couple little lights on there indicating that it's alive and well. And down here you can see that uh, some of the lights have come on. Those are going to be the GI lights eventually. And the three flashing lights are just uh, flashing to indicate where the start of the GI strings are. So all the rest of these lights that are off right now uh, are lights that are driven by that board. So I'm going to turn it on. <clears throat> and you guys will be able to see along with us, us whether those boards actually that board actually works or not. And these are the, the, the balls in the rack as they are sequentially counting up. You can you see probably can't see them. But let me uh, let me dim our lights here a little bit. So it looks like the lights are, are blinking up. Some of the lights are programmed with colors to help us make sure we know where they are. One, two, three, ball, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. So it looks so like, it looks like it's work. working perfectly. And um, so. And if we put the machine in test mode, you should see them all turn on and flash corresponding to the test. Oops. Okay. What happened? Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> we must have a bad contact somewhere. That could very well be. But you can see all the board lights are flashing and they're all mapped to lights that are on this string and they are all flashing at the same time. So it looks like we have good continuity, all the lights are working, now we just have to program each light to its corresponding spot on the play field and then we can do some tricks with it. We can change the color of these lights if we want our the lights under the play field to be a little richer depending on the lens that they are illuminating and so forth. So a lot of, a lot of cool stuff you can do to uh, make these lights more effective or more colorful or whatever you wanted to do with them. Okay, so the next thing uh, we're going to do, and we're probably going to do this off camera just because it's a tedious and slow operation, is we're going to map out and make sure that each of these lights is where we think it is and know what it's doing. And as long as we got that all correct, then, uh, then we can go back and uh, actually lay this under the play field and then we will finally program uh, the microprocessor with the order that the LEDs are actually now positioned in.